Previously on The Last of Us Season 1 Episode 7, we learned how Ellie got bit and Joel is infirmed with infection. How did you think this episode went? What'd you like uh, about so it? What'd you Season like? 1 Episode 8, uh, I gave it a 5 out of 10. This is probably my least favorite episode of the season. Uh, I really felt that Joel was a psychopath in this one. Like, torturing people. Uh, I was wondering, is... Are Joel's actions of torture and murder better or worse than cannibalism? Got me thinking, like, hmm. Joel's torturing people, making them feel pain, versus a village, God do what you gotta do. Couldn't tell. That's true. Yeah. And then from the townspeople's perspective, basically two people roll into town, kill a bunch of people, kill the leader, burn down their hall, and then and then roll out of town. Oh shit, that's right. Uh, so I was like, I don't really like Joel and Ellie as much after this. Huh. So I had mixed feelings, you know, about this episode. I didn't really know where they were going. So I didn't give it a five out of 10. Yeah, I totally did not think about it like that. But yeah, you, that's right. You got a, you got a point there. Maybe we'll talk about it a bit more here. Um, I thought it was an eight out of 10. <laughs> I was super <laughs> happy with this episode. Um, cause so first of all, like we saw Joel, I mean, Joel's back up on his feet. So, so great. We got our boy back and, and he is a, well, he's a murder master. <laughs> he's so good. He, he ambushes the first guy with a knife kill. He like gets off the ground. People think he's sick and, but no, he stabs the dude in the back. Then he, he ambushes a second guy with meleeing him with his, the, the, with the butt of his gun and he leaves the body there as bait for the second guy he melees two guys that's that's three ambushes altogether and then he's so smart like he gets the guy that's tied up in the chair to mark the map with blood on the knife and i was watching it it's like the second guy is just gonna look at where the the blood is on the map and just be like right there like i gave you the same spot but joel totally did it on purpose he gave the guy the knife with blood on the uh, blood on the knife to mark the map and like the market for sure because if he had just pointed the map joel could forget where he parked marked the map like joel's super smart he's done this before but at the same time uh now that you say it like he's really good at murder <laughs> yeah, yeah. i don't know <laughs> on the counterpoint like opposite of joel's character was that preacher and that preacher was so creepy like just the heebie-jeebies the whole time i was looking at him like he was like i'm a preacher i'm like mm, you got some culty vibes just right away ellie I was impressed with Ellie this episode, like super smart, super self-reliant, like especially when she got trapped in that cage in the little like like kitchen prison. Like she just was kept working the problem, kept thinking about it, kept figuring out how to get out. Love it. And at the end of the episode, Joel and Ellie are back on their feet. They're they're back on their mission. Our, our team is back together. It felt good. Eight out of 10 for me. But I see what you're saying. Like. <laughs> There was some iffy stuff there, but let's get into it. Let's Shall get we? Into it. All right, let's watch The Last of Us, season one, episode eight. First things first, we a little clippy, clippy of Ellie clearing the neighborhood. Let's watch. So I was thinking, like, she turns one corner, checks one street, and is like, we're clear. Good. Shoulders the rifle, and she's leaving. I was like, what? That's right. There could be anyone in buildings or around corners. She didn't even have the rifle up against the shoulder. Like, she wasn't ready to fire. Right. It's not like they've ever been shot from a random house in a random neighborhood before. Oh, wait. That's happened many times. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah, she should have experience. I guess she she could have been listening for a while, but like, like that's still not as good as you, you got to clear it. You got to clear it before you're walking out. Or you simply don't have time to clear. Then what? You run to the forest. Yeah. Or you like, you you like stealth it to the forest. That's right. Follow the outskirts of the town, mm -hmm. but maybe not on the outskirts outskirts because then people can see you from far away. It's be stealthy as you can, I guess, is the answer. Mm -hmm. Ellie, the quiet hunter. Ellie's got some hunting skills in this episode. Mm -hmm. There she is, hunting. <laughs> I 
Okay, okay, okay. I didn't realize that, that was the clip we were about to show. <laughs> she, she does have all these skills. She she has it in a bit here. So so when I saw that, I was like, she's gonna shoot that bunny from there. Like, that's like a, I don't know what caliber rifle it was, but like, a, shooting that close, and buddy, that that meat is like torn apart. She's way too close. That's she needs she needs trapping skills. I was also thinking, <laughs> what's the most prominent feature of a bunny? It's huge ears. ears. Uh -huh. well, that probably means bunnies are extremely good at listening. So footprints in the snow, twigs, anything. They're out of there. They're gone. Who's that? I'm out. They're prey bounce. animals. They're, they I'm literally going to bounce. That's right. They're out of there. So she's just wandering around. Just There's, there's prey right there. Just rifle it. She's close enough she could have stepped on it. No, <laughs> she's not that close. <laughs> yeah, she needs like a... She needs trapping. She can't be walking around like that. Yeah. Or can she? Maybe. How crunchy is snow? I guess it depends on the snow. Well, if your life depended on hearing the crunching of snow, crunching of snow is pretty loud. Yeah, pretty loud. And those bunny ears, they're big old bunny ears. Big old bunny ears, yeah. Mm -hmm. But that shit happens. Like you trip on stuff. It happens. You trip, you trip on stuff, yeah. Similar, similar to this deer. Deer, they're prey animals. They, they, they flight when they when they get close. She's huffing and puffing, breathing around. Yeah, footprints in the snow, making a crunchy noise. Uh, it may if, if there's a little bit of wind, it means there's some smell to it too. Mm -hmm. Oh, so that's a healthy deer. That's Didn't right. look like any yeah. eye problems, smell problems, or hearing problems. Fully aware, brain working properly. Mm -hmm. Oh God! Did you walk upon a deer like that? What? The? I mean, I'm not a hunter. I've I've never hunted a deer, um, but from what I've seen, I guess on TV, uh, it always looks like they're much farther away. Mm -hmm. Now, like like, and they have to like be thoughtful of like where the wind is going and making any sounds is like right down to like every step has to be like carefully placed. And mm -hmm. um, so so I don't know. I mean, if you're a hunter, please please tell us in the comments like. Is this shot reasonable? Like, and as far as I understand, in hunting, there's a lot of sitting around and waiting mm. for the, hunt, the deer to come by. I don't know Ooh. how often you just happen upon deer. Right. You know, that's I mean, right. I guess it happens like, on occasion. I've seen pictures of people hunting where they like put food on the ground and climb up a tree, and they just basically just shoot down at the deer when the deer's like, I wasn't expecting to look up a tree, but I guess when you're like how often do you end up like seeing an animal far away and then you have to track it mm. or humans their population has gone way down so the deer populations have rapidly exploded and there's just mm. a tremendous amount of deer and bunnies in the woods and in the mountains which means the villagers in the cannibal village they've been actively hunting for a long time and they can't find anything like how bad are they at hunting <laughs> They're real bad at hunting. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and with the with the collapse of human populations, animals probably walk around a lot more, a lot more freely. So mm -hmm. not only is there more of them, but they're like extra confident, just unaware of stuff. And that cannibal culture. That dumb. means that they're doing it because they like it. <laughs> hmm. At the same time, I mean, maybe maybe this is exactly what we're talking about here. Like they give Ellie a compliment about how she's a good hunter, but I don't know about that. I mean, it was a good shot. Mm -hmm. Kind of high, not oh. quite the lungs. Yeah. What do you think? I don't see anybody. You think we can just take it? Yeah. Quickly, whoever shot it's probably nearby. Don't! Drop your rifles! Now! Turn and face me. Slow. Any sudden moves, I put one right between your eyes. Ditto for buddy boy. Right here. You're quite a hunter. We didn't even hear you coming. Turn around and walk away. So she snuck up on them, 
and they're like, mm-hmm. "You're quite a hunter. We didn't hear you come up and uh, coming coming up on us." But does that make her a good hunter, or does that make them bad at living? Like th- they also have healthy eyes and ears and noses. Like they should be looking around, making sure there's no one coming up on them. Yeah, absolutely. Are they actually listening for anybody walking? I guess not. I mean, they see a deer on the ground that's clearly like been shot, <laughs> and they're not like looking around like, "Hmm, someone's mm. probably watching us right now." Right. Through fact, a scope. Through a scope. In fact, I don't think Ellie should engage here, like, because because if these guys see that there's a dead deer on the ground, then now they know that maybe not her, but somebody's in the area. Somebody's in the area with a rifle. Mm-hmm. They could, because they have two people, take the deer back to their, their home and carve it up and then send out searching parties because they know that someone's nearby and you can't just mm-hmm. let someone be watching you all the time. What would you do? Would you engage with these guys and try to bully the, the deer away from them or do you leave them? So I guess this is like, you know, animals in the wild. You know, they, they make a kill and then the annoying hyenas show up and take the kill, you know. <laughs> so at that point it's a calculation like do i think i can take on the hyenas if i can i take them out if i don't think i can take on the hyenas which are these two mm-hmm. then i have to go for intel which means i stay back and i follow them and, and yeah. assess because at this point ellie has no idea how many people they have at their base i think right. you have to just hang back and watch just, just even just to figure mm-hmm. out where their base is so they don't know where you are but you know where you're there that's good intel. Would you try to shoot one of them? Because you could probably get sight on one of them, kill him. The other one's going to be like, oh, my friend just died. Let me run away or drop to the ground or something. Would you take that chance? I think you got to wait for the shot, get col- get the collateral. Get that get that two-in-one headshot. Two-in-one headshot. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> heavy. So, you know. Do, 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 bing. Bing. Yep. 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 Easy. Do that like all the it. time. You only load one bullet in your magazine because you know it's bing, going to be perfect. I don't even have a magazine. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it's got an internal clip. It's unnecessary. <laughs> uh, also, I just uh, have one in the chamber. I don't even need a magazine. Extra weight. Keeps me less I don't mobile. even put it in the chamber. I just throw the bullet. Yep. Achoo! Mm-hmm. <laughs> Shohei. Shohei Otani! All right, so Ellie engages with the with the two guys from the cannibal camp, and and they start negotiating. But hmm, who here has the upper hand? Okay, all I ask is ten seconds of your time. I just want to. I talk. won't say it twice. My name is David. This is my friend James. We're from a larger group, and we're all very very hungry. I'm from a large group too. Also hungry. Well, even so, you can't drag this back on your own. So she's got the rifle on one dude because there's one barrel in the rifle she can't like split barrel uh, it's not holstered on her shoulder she delivers the line like I- i'm hungry too I-, I have people not very well um so they're like reading her that's right and she does not have the strength to drag the deer so what's her position of like what's she going to leverage to come out of the situation in the positive could she get like a wooden plank and get leverage to lift the deer? Is that what you're saying? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I meant negotiational this... leverage, but yeah, you're oh, right. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. She could okay. get a stick. Although, where, where is there going to be a stick that's refined enough, you know, in the right shape? She's going to shoot this. out a tree <laughs> with her rifle and have it tip over. I mean, I guess actually the only leverage she has is the fact that she has the drop on him. Mm-hmm. You know, now her leverage is gone. Um, That's right. They could charge her if two people charged her, even if she got a clean headshot on one. She has a bolt action. She's, she has to manually reload that. And so is she going to get two lucky headshots or is the second person going to beat her? Right. And, you know, even though obviously it's close com- close quarters, not close quarters, close, they're close, close enough, to each maybe. other. That shot is not easy. Somebody lunging at you in the heat of the moment, you got to assess what's going on. You may miss. And she doesn't have close quarters sights on. She has a long range scope. And so she would have to aim the barrel just based on feeling you have, you have no alignment. Yep. Right. So 
she doesn't so they're obviously terrible hunters because apparently we've determined that the woods are filled with prey animals like deer and rabbits and they can't yep. find a damn thing nope. but she doesn't know that these could be experienced <laughs> hunters they did find something they found an already dead deer <laughs> i mean not bad yeah, right everyone gets lucky yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah but she didn't yeah. have much leverage in this engagement right this was a very risky maneuver so I think we're, we've determined that it's either kill them or hang back, follow them. Yep. Or I guess serve. the third option is abandon the kill altogether. Yeah. I mean, animals in the wild do this all the time. Like, hey, I can't take on the hyenas. I got to just leave the... Bummer, but I'm a cheetah and I'm good for speed. Hyenas, there's many of them. They're good for close range fighting. Like, yeah, I just got to leave it. I can't keep it. Hyenas are worse awful <laughs> not only does she as well <laughs> say again i think they do do their own share of hunting as well but you know they I also steal so. stuff They're mean but i mean lions steal stuff cheetahs will steal stuff if they can i guess that's literally in their name the cheetahs Cheeto. yep so not only does she take a badge engagement where she doesn't have that much leverage she shows her hand we're not asking for charity. We, we can trade you for some of the deer. We have, what do you need? We have boots. Medicine? She's just, just a touch, more than a touch enthusiastic about that medicine. Just, yep, just give it away. Just mm -hmm. no poker face at all. Right. How, how could she give away, how could she get around giving away that's what she wanted? Hmm. So it's hard because you got to spontaneously think about this in the moment, but maybe you could create a list of items you need food water medicine uh weapons Jello. and ammo oh it's it's mm -hmm. the middle in the list yeah, did it even did i you know not a big deal oh yeah whatever so I, mean, I haven't given like, you know, yeah whatever. it's important it's part of the list but yeah. i'm not sh i'm showing my hand that that's the critical thing that i need right now ah and so she she could like say like bring all five of these things and then at the time she could make a decision right then but uh, right. until she actually makes a decision on the spot then the other guys, the the bad guys, are left unknowing. They just right. Then they they could come back and they'd be like, "Well, we have some food and some water and some medicine, but we're not. I don't think we're going to give you any guns and ammo." Internally, she's right. like, "Yes," but outwardly, she could be like, "Oh, right. I really need that guns and ammo." Damn. Damn. <laughs> oh no. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we've just said two things about how Ellie is kind of messing up his engagement, but she does some elegant ejection of rounds. Like this girl is a is a ninja. Watch, watch, watch what she does with the rounds as she ejects them. Ten steps back. Good. Keep distance. <laughs> Keep going. She steps on the butt of the rifle to to pin it down. Did you see that? Did you mm -hmm. see those rounds come out? One more time. She comes swats it. Yeah. She swats yep. it with her rifle. She swats two rounds with her <laughs> rifle. That's that's ninja skills. Like like these things are ejecting this guy, and then she's like, no. Like so precise. What a perfect location for a rifle. Like I would be terrified of that girl. Right. So maybe she's doing some form of drunken boxing. Where she's like, I don't have the don't have on my on. on my shoulder, but she accidentally showed how good she is by having the casings or the the rounds bounce off the rifle accidentally on purpose. Accidentally on purpose. So it's like such awareness of her surroundings. So amazing. This girl's scary as heck. Ah yes, and then so she she elegant ejection. When she she gets the leader of the camp. To drag away the deer now I, he drags the deer by the by the antlers and so but like is that the right thing to do i actually i genuinely don't know should he drag know. the deer by the head or by the foot let's watch bring him with us go oh, 
You know, now that I'm thinking about it, some physics uh, applied to this. So the antlers, so probably the neck and the legs of the deer are pretty strong because it's in the wild. However, the neck has one tube, essentially, of muscle and bone. You're grabbing both, part, both antlers. There's a lot of torque that could happen as you're dragging it. So eventually the neck might become loose oh, wibbly, because of all the, to- all the torque occurring. Whereas with the legs, they're designed to apply torque off center line of the body because they're, they're displaced from the spine via the hip bone. So if you pull with both legs, then you're pulling on a structure like the hip that's designed to take oh. those movements. So it'll probably degrade a lot less fast. So I'm going to say you should drag with the feet. Yeah, I mean, that that's totally reasonable. I was also thinking along the lines of, in terms of not damaging the deer as you drag it around. I was wondering, I guess, are there hunters that are in our audience that can tell us, like, what what do people do? Um, I also thought about it in terms of a security thing. Like, like, does Ellie want him holding on to the antlers, or does she want him far away from those? I mean, I guess he's not going to break them off with his hand. No Is way. that true? It, it, I, I mean, it, it's possible that this is like the right timing where the antlers fall mm-hmm. off. Like, that does happen. Like I seasonally. think, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that does happen, but I think that would be really specific a lot of timing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Oh, also, if she wants half the deer, then she could get him by at gunpoint to process the meat. Be like, hang it up cut out the guts that way when your friend gets here and, and cut the meat in half because that way when your friend gets here I'm going to pack up my half and run otherwise when the friend gets there like she still have a whole deer like what are you going to do with it and that's also a way to get intel that's a good point because if you say hey please clean and dress the deer is that the right the, oh that's right right yeah um, then if he's doing it like all you're like hmm this guy's experienced mm-hmm. whereas if he's fumbling around or doesn't know how to do it you're like hmm Maybe this guy isn't such a good hunter. That's right. And you can start to figure out what his role is in the society is because if he gave orders to the other guy but doesn't have the knife skills himself, then mm, maybe he's a power person. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So the scene, we, we see a transition to the cannibal camp, a cannibal camp. And I noticed all these cars out here with like, I mean, I guess this one has its hood open. Um, and this guy has like its its windshield wiper up, but I wonder like what resources are in these cars that this cannibal uh, group should take out, like um, like for example the leather seats, harvest that because you could take that leather seat even if you don't use it as a seat, you could use that leather for like elbow patches, you know, let people know that you're a fancy professor, uh, or or leather helmets in case you want to do old fashioned football, um, but that's that's the idea like you can you can harvest stuff out of these modern devices for things that you need in the kind of, um, you know, post-apocalyptic times. What else could we get from these? Do you, do you think they've stripped them already? If I'm seeing headlights, I know I would strip those. Yeah, Heck, even license, license plates, yeah. you can use those for things, just the metal by itself, even if you don't mm-hmm. melt it down into something else. So I like there's electronic components in there. Every little bit of wiring. You can't make new electrical wires. Mm -hmm. Harvest it. And then there's probably random sort of mechanical things like springs and screws that could be useful in the future. Rails. Basically anything metal because creating new metal things is very challenging now. Yeah. The glass of the windows could be useful. Light bulbs. Even though it might have this annoying curvature to it, but Mm -hmm. it might be as useful for something. Well, that could be, a, you make that into a feature. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You can make like, with a glass, you can make a little like operating room. So that way the family members can see as you dissect their loved ones. Yeah. Oh yeah. Plastics could be important because they're durable. So as you're slicing and dicing cousin Jane, you're like, I spill something. It's like, oh, it hits the floor and it doesn't shatter. Yeah. Yeah. So as I'm cannibalizing the car for cannibalization, I'm clean. Yeah. Be neat and clean. You don't want little shards of plate round on the ground. Oh, that's dangerous. Cut your foot. No good. That's right. Plastic plates. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Will this work? Uh, 
Joe, where the fuck do I put this? Fuck it. No. Gross. This is why I chose physics. I don't have to deal with gushy people. That would yeah, probably so, smell all to hell. Yeah. Oh, gross. Yeah, that's right. It's infected and pussy. And... So so I don't know. Does this work like this? Can you inject penicillin just kind of randomly into the area? Um, so the fact that it's a syringe makes me think that it needs to go in the intravenous. It needs to go into a vein. But I think penicillin can be taken orally, I think. But I don't know if it's in this form. Is that okay? Um, honestly, injecting it into the wound, I mean, it's a good guess. Like, right? Like, <laughs> deliver the medicine to the infected part. Yeah, so that was my, my question was, first off, dosage. If you, can you OD or kill somebody with too much penicillin? Absolutely. You can OD with anything. I mean, I think there's there are there are medicines where okay, either the 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 amount you would have to inject is so absurdly high that essentially you can't. Um, oh, you know, you're like, talking about the the LD fifty. What's LD fifty? Oh, LD fifty. I just took a, a chemical safety training. LD fifty is the lethal dosage fifty percent of the time. So so oh, okay. I calculated it out, and it's it's. Because I was also looking at this, I calculated it out, and it's something for like a two hundred, a hundred kilogram person, which is like about me. You need something like one point two kilograms of penicillin, which, which in the solid form. So like this is even more dilute because it's liquid form, but it's like. Oh, you looked this you up. Need, yeah, I calculated it. Yeah. Well, the the LD fifty. I don't know if it would work like that. I don't know if it would, like, can you inject it into a wound and like it'll be effective? I looked up. And I was like. Because she, she puts in like a mystery amount of penicillin. Like mm -hmm. I was like, is this dangerous? I don't know. So, so, so I looked up. Go ahead. Yeah. So based on that number, it sounds like she, she can't inject in a toxic amount. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, I was worried about that. I was like, is that a toxic amount? I have no idea. But, um, but that being said, I don't, I don't understand medicine. Like I'm very, very amateur at best. And so while it may not be toxic, like does the LD50 mean acute toxicity? Like you're going to die right away. But, uh, but. It could also be already medically too much, like your That's system right. now has to has to filter out too much penicillin. Now, now right. it's worse for the wound. I, I don't know. Right. So there's some nuance there, but you know, not sure. Like, could she inject too much that, in his weakened state, it sends him to death? Could be. Maybe. I don't know how penicillin works exactly. Hmm. Um, and I guess injecting it into the wound, into the the way she injects With it, part, area. you know, I assume it would sort of clear out the area a little bit, but I think you need to put it into the bloodstream so it gets around the body. I don't think the infection stays in that particular area. I, wanna, I, mean, I guess, does anybody know, would this be effective? If you could just, you didn't know what you were doing, you injected it into the area of the infection, not into the bloodstream. Could you get positive results from that? Uh, and yeah, I mean enough it, it, to overcome the infection, right? Will the body absorb it out of that little little area, little local spot, and will it figure itself out? I don't know. Please, please tell us. Yeah, we don't know. Ooh, Manberger helper. So we get that. We get a cut. We get a cut to the the cannibal camp, and they are serving up some meats. Mm mm mm. Mm -mm. Kind of. So they're making some type of soup, I guess. Some stew. No hair nets, that's the worst part. Oh, gross. I didn't even notice that. That's just a little extra keratin. No, no, <laughs> hey, it's all human. It's all. Oh, gosh. Venison. Well, venison, I guess. Ven venison. No, no, no. This is definitely. This is actually, I think, her husband, right? Got him. Got him. Gloosh. Gloosh. She just drops it in there with her bare paws. Yeah. Okay. So what did I not notice? What, what did I not like about this? What did I what did I notice and what did I not like? Where's the care? Where's the passion? Where's the love? You're preparing a meal for the entire community. Where, where do you, do they not care about flavor in this this settlement? Are there any spices, any salt, any pepper? Give me give me one of these little salt bay things. 
You gotta care about the meals you present for people. That's what I was upset. I, about. I mean, I mean, I hundred percent agree. If in the apocalypse, you know, world has gone to shit. These tiny bits of joy, and one of those big joys <laughs> is food, would be. Right. Yeah, I mean. To be fair, they may not have access to salts and spice and fl different flavors. They're in the northern hemisphere, probably at like 40 or 50 degrees latitude in the winter. I don't think without global supply chains, you're getting much pepper. Oh, yeah, definitely not pepper. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah. I was trying to be a smart ass, but, but you're right. Like a little bits of like a little bit of salt in your food. That would be such a game changer, like such a oh, mental game yeah. changer. Like it would feel so good, especially if they're starving and they're or getting close to starving. Just a little bit of salt. The brain would like, just love it. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, back in the day, thousands of years ago or whatever, hundreds of years ago, people used to fight wars over spice. So hmm. it is a big deal. Salty bitches. That's salty because they're 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 upset stabbing each other question about harvesting salt how difficult would it be to harvest salt from the land because the western u.s is, was underneath was ocean a long time ago right is that seafloor and i guess if they're near salt lake city there was there's a bunch of like riverways that don't drain out to the ocean that's why they have salt lake i guess i guess if they're near salt lake <laughs> city they could just get it from the ground like it's on the surface well it depends on how widespread the economy is in terms of trade sure. good point you know you could get salt from different these these la lakes that end up concentrating the water end up having salt in them there's also salt mines if it's easily seen but if it's a very local economy and they're stuck in whatever tiny area they are in that's right then there might not be any salt available these guys, the, the cannibal camps, survival strategy may be isolation, in which case they're not connected to the salt locations. Yeah. Good point. Very good point. That's a manipulator. Yes, we found a girl who was with the man who took Alec from us. When the sun rises, I'll lead a group out to pick up her trail. Won't be hard to find in the snow. And we'll bring that man to justice. You should kill him. You should kill both of them. Oh, honey. I know you think you don't have a father anymore. But the truth is, Hannah, you will always have a father. And you will show him respect when he's speaking. Are you saying it's... Was it smart of her to interrupt him? Or are you saying was it smart of him to slap her? I mean, okay. He's this terrible, creepy dude. But what I'm saying is his manipulation tactics here on the young girl are super effective. He's talking amongst his group. She talks at him. And then he comes over, slaps her, which tears her down emotionally, physically. And then he lends me. a hand to bring her back up. Hmm. So he tears her down and then brings her back up. And now he's like intimidated her, socially shamed her. And now he's bringing her back up for his evil ends. I, I mean... See. I'm saying he's a master manipulator like he that he didn't know that was going to happen that day and he handled it i mean that's right that's right on the fly because if he had just if he had beaten her to the ground and left her there and all that shame and embarrassment mm -hmm. that's the start of his enemy like she's gonna right. one day raise up and rise up and like fuck you right mm -hmm. so by bringing her back into the fold he shows her like you did something bad but i still care about you yeah. and oh that is dangerous that is a dangerous yeah. person that's yeah. clever but awful but awful well oh, if he's creepy maybe if he's doing it for good he could you know he could be a great leader oh but if my he's, gosh but if he's doing it he's just doing it so he can like do terrible things he's like a really terrible person i see what you're saying because like if we were in charge of a colony and we needed to make sure that everyone worked together as a team so that way we could like build food supplies and and and, and survive then yeah we can't tolerate this type of like someone undercutting us just like, just like in the first episode when we were looking at the fireflies and the commander like gave an order and then her second in command was cutting her off. Like that that messed up their their chain of command. Like so the right thing is to dress down the person that's that's undercutting you. I would say his dressing down tactics was abusive. Yep. Yep. But 
effective. Maybe a effective. better leader would be able to do it in a way that isn't so evil. That's right. Yeah. He could have been suave instead of being brutal. Right. Ah, if we're him. talking about the survival of the species, I guess you gotta do it. Oh, oh I don't like it. No, don't like it. Was this smart? Oh, what did yeah. Do? This is Ellie. Like... Oh, yeah, yes. yeah. So much noise. So loud. Evil dude chasing him down. Hey, my fuckers! She's so fun. So, was that smart? I mean, now they know where she is. Even if she's able to get out of sight, because she has the horse, they're like, well, she was here. I know how fast a horse travels. She's within a mile. She's within two miles. Right. She's geolocated herself temporarily. I see. So, I mean, I mean, I guess that was her goal was to draw them away from Joel. Mm, but, I mean, they had like six or seven people. They could have said sent even five after them and said, mm -hmm. okay, everyone else follow these footprints in the snow to this one garage. Right. And then if, if they're like, why did she do that? Oh, she's trying to draw us away from where that, uh, the dude is being held, which means that she's trying to draw us away from here, which means just, yeah, yeah, he's here. Wherever she went, you go the other way. Opposite way. way. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> what, so what, what can she do? I guess like she could make some noises that aren't gunshots on the other side of the town. So that way they're like, go investigate that, but not so Ooh. obvious as like, there she is. Yeah. Hmm. She could even send the horse in a certain direction mm -hmm. without her. Or she could just lay low. That's right. It's possible that she could have avoided them and they would have been like, no one's here, I guess. And then she may have to make a silent kill of a single person, mm -hmm. which may be less risk. That's what I would do. I would stay silent and just try to, you know, was it fight, flight or freeze? I would do a freeze. Hmm. I mean, denial of intel. Super yeah. important. Yeah. Plus, he wasted two bullets. Shooting into the sky. That's right. Hmm. I mean, it worked out. So it was okay. It worked, but... I mean, it kind of worked out. Oh, yeah. Because the horse got shot. And then she fell. Like, actually, she could have died on the fall from the horse. And Joel was found out. His location was anyway. found anyway. So. Yeah. It worked mm. out. She tried worked something. Out. Okay. But I guess if you or I were in the situation, maybe handle it differently. We, if, we were, if we were in a situation, we would handle it perfectly every time. Every time? Every time. Mm -hmm. Mistakes? I don't even know what those are. So I heard about them secondhand. It was a mistake even learning about them. Joel's turn around. <laughs> Joel is sick in bed. Kind of. Feverish. Feverish, can Stop barely it. even breathe, can't even talk to Ellie. Falling asleep, fading in and out. He's up! He's up. Like a ninja, real quiet too. And then look at him working his core here. Working the core, working right. the core. Those bleaks going. So I'm like, <laughs> that's there. right. Yeah. Core, core. Ooh, wait. Core. Oh, bleaks, that's where he's injured. That's where his stab wound yeah. is. And he just he just basically like wrestled with his strong core to the ground. Yep. He's back up. Joel is back. He's back in the game. He took a little rest. To, took a took a light Joel. rest. Got some HP back. He's back yeah. in the game. Yeah, that that baseball bat that splintered. He stabbed it, and now he's good. Mm -hmm. He's good. Is he good? Oh. Oh. Leave him alone. Oh. You next. Oh, oh, Jesus! You focus right here, oh. or I'll pop your fucking kneecap off. She's alive. Where? Oh, fuck! What town? Silver Lake. You're gonna point to where we are and where your resort is. Go ask him; he'll tell you I'm not lying. Oh! oh. Why the fuck did you do that? He told you what you wanted. No. Oh. Is Joel good? Hey, he got the information he needed. That's true. Got the intel. Got the intel. Got it done. 
he got it done but he like went out of his way like he already had a knife in his hand like he could have just slit the second guy's throat and been like all right i'm on my way to go find ellie like the fact that he chose to use a blunt object like that kill was for him no he was just laying pipe god damn that's right <laughs> <laughs> so you know the first one was a stab had to be done the second one was just laying pipe for fun yeah playing baseball yeah. Well, I guess it's T ball because the ball wasn't was on the stand. It was it was taped to the stand. Could not move. That's right. He, and he took a swing because the, the 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 ball was attached to the T. The T and the ball go flying over the fence. He didn't he did an overhead swing because he wanted to punish that ball into the ground. That's right. That's right. It's now in the mantle. Hmm. Okay, so that was The Last of Us, season one, episode eight. And so so will they make it to Salt Lake City? They, they only got one episode. Let's We'll see what they do. Mm-hmm. I was also curious, thinking, okay, after the aftermath of this episode, so they killed the evil preacher guy, super evil, but there was a lot of townsfolk in that town just making their way. Their communal hall is burned down. Perhaps other adjacent buildings have burned down because, you know, there's no oh, fire yeah. department. So now the oh, settlement yeah. is kind of left in tatters. Will a new leader rise up? Will it be okay? That's right. I mean, we'll probably never know, but it could be a settlement collapse. Could be a resurgence. Tough I was like, know. I was like, evil dude dead, no problem. But actually, you're right. Like, he may have been the only evil person. Maybe that and like a few people around him. But other people were just trying to just trying to make it by in the apocalypse. Like, that's right. And so, without their leader, I mean, he was evil, like for sure. But he also kept them alive. So, like, without them, are they going to be able to make the decisions that they need to make in order to survive? Did uh, did Joel and Ellie just roll in and then just wreck everyone? Yeah. Also, the the preacher was bit, right? Like Ellie bit him, and he was he was turning like his he was getting infected. Like, does he wake up and kill everyone there? Ooh, they have to deal. Oh, the, all the dead people might be infected. Hmm. Hmm. Now they have not only burn down you know buildings and a dead leader they have infected to deal with in their town oof sucks for them sucks for them shouldn't have picked a bad leader Mm -hmm. will they survive find out next time on the last of us season one episode nine see you guys next time see you then